Good morning, I just woke up and uh, oh my gosh, don't even look at my face. I have a big long story to tell you guys a little bit later about what exactly happened, but I am just going to get ready for the day. Lucky's on his walk and yeah, this looks a little scary, so maybe let's put some makeup on. This is the final look for today. Basically just put on concealer, eyebrows, and a little bit of chapstick. We're looking a little rough, but, but I thought I would show you why are you laughing? I'm drinking what? tea. What is so funny? Kevin here is a fourth year medical student at a <clears throat> prestigious university, but right now it's converted to Zoom University. So I thought we would have him do a vlog takeover and show you a day in his life as a med student. Why is your head cut off? Thank I'm you. not a vlogger. So yeah, we will um, take you guys along and it'll probably be like half that, but I don't know. We'll show them part of my day and part of your day. And most importantly, let's get breakfast because I'm hungry. Is this what you do? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> breakfast of the champions. Normally, I'm the one who makes that thing, but today we're going to have Kevin do it. Smoothie making time. We are making a mango smoothie. We have a very, very ripe banana. These are the ones that we got from Trader Joe's that are low key, really crazy. Oh my God. <laughs> Gross. Okay. It's fine. <laughs> and then you can get these really nice mango chucks at Costco. So I usually just put like a handful in. This is what makes it like really icy and creamy. So I like to put a decent amount in there. We're just gonna fill it until a little bit lower than the max line because I like my smoothies to be a little bit on the creamier side. Here's our neutral bullet. Okay, that's done. Well, there's two people and only one that big. Sorry, I'm slow. Um, we yeah. Have a smoothie. Okay, well, it's almost time for class, so okay. I won't give you a pass. Give me a pass. Mm-hmm. Do you want to talk us through how your education has changed due to the pandemic and how like your normal class schedule is like now? So I am kind of at the end of my fourth year. There's uh, about two weeks left before graduation. Um, graduation and everything will be virtual. Um, but how fourth year works, third and fourth year of med school, most of the time that you spend is actually in the hospital um, doing rotations. Those, all of those have, have been canceled um, since early March. But for me, um, the last couple of weeks is kind of boot camp for intern year. Normally, this is the time when our whole class who really hasn't seen each other because we've been kind of separated into our own different places for our various clinical rotations. Um, we come back together and kind of learn, kind of do a review of all of med school. So all of that's been consolidated to online Zoom courses. It's the final two weeks of boot camp before intern year starts, so it's just like all the things to prepare you for like the real everyday job, right? Cool, so we're gonna eat breakfast and class starts in seven minutes, so we'll oh eat God. quickly. Alright <laughs> all right, guys, forgive me for my terrible camera angles, I am not used to doing this, but um, here's a quick setup review. It's uh, very simple, I just basically have my laptop and my nice noise canceling headphones so I don't hear this person in the back. If I have to take notes, I'll take notes on the computer as well. Here I'm logging on five seconds before the class. I am freaking out right now because I never type in my password correctly the first time or the second time. So this is my schedule, the calendar for the week for all the Zoom classes that we have. Um, you can see we can click on each of those different classes to log on to the right Zoom links. So there's about 150 of us that are graduating part of this class. Um, maybe 100 people show up. All right, I found a better angle. Um, so today, pretty much full day of classes. First class is like an ICU review. Um, a lot of interns first year will do at least one or two months on the intensive care unit as an intern. Um, so this is kind of probably, this is a review from two of our professors. We have a 50 minute class and then we have a 10 minute break. And then we shall repeat that until lunchtime. Today, all of these are, I think, lectures, but we will also have Zoom small groups and breakout sessions where we will also need to kind of prepare and then talk to each other. Here, I'm thinking not really about lecture, but what I want to eat for lunch. I can't stay still for more than three seconds. 
Um, shameless plug for um, noise canceling headphones. I think they're helpful when you have noisy roommates. All right, guys, just finished with the first lecture. It was actually an hour and a half. I am going to do a bio break and then drink some water. Drinking water is very important. Got like three more minutes before the next class starts. I'm just gonna write one or two quick emails. Um, yeah, so a lot of things, a lot of administrative things we need to do at the end of medical school. I have to meet with a bunch of uh, financial counselors to make sure my loans and everything is in place. Yes, and then a lot of things I have to get moving. Um, finding a new apartment, finding a new place, and then finally actually getting a real job. So there's a lot of onboarding um, requirements that's necessary, and then also apply for my medical license, um, which is scary and exciting at the same time. Here I'm trying to look at a very small image because my computer is small and the doctor is trying to put in something really tiny. Oh, hello. You want to help me work? Um, the batties. What's the batties? I can have the batties. <laughs> Why does he look like a fetal pig? <laughs> hey guys, so I had a little bit of a less... Actually, no, it was pretty productive. I would give it a solid 8 out of 10. But my skin is like straight up peeling again, so there's that situation that we're dealing with. And the Betty has been sleeping all morning, so there's that. I actually need to figure out how to organize my taxes today, so it's not like the most exciting, fun day. Do you want to be tucked in? Okay, so every day he comes on the couch and he sleeps here with the blanket, um, and he wants to be like fully, fully, fully tucked in like a baby. Are you a baby? I love you, cutie. So yeah, um, that's pretty much his daily routine. Today we are making... Trader Joe's frozen potato medley. I don't know what it's called. You know what I'm talking about. Um, and then we're also gonna make my favorite dumplings. In the middle of the lecture right now. As you can see here, I am using a Windows computer because I am a poor medical student. Time for lunch. Luggy, come here. Come here. Lunch, but I'm also just packaging Poshmark orders. So yeah, I'm just trying to like clean out my closet and stuff So if you're interested, I'm gonna link my Poshmark down below for you guys Hey guys, it's the afternoon we Got two more one-hour lectures in the afternoon in the small group It's been a pretty full day. Have class till probably about four or five today. Look at the buddies. He's just the tanning How are you sir? All right, let's not disturb his wonderful daily activities. All right, another break here. I'm going to get myself a little snack. I'm gonna cut myself an apple. We just had to talk about integrative medicine, acupuncture, herbs, and you know other ways other than Western medicine to kind of help our patients, like mindfulness, meditation. We also had a talk before that from someone in New York about what's been going on. Hmm, I said at the beginning of the day that I was not going to sit on the couch, but this last class is actually a small group discussion, so. I will need to turn my camera on, and yes, I thought this background was a little bit less less noisy. All right, guys, class is all done. I am pooped. Lucky was also listed in, and he feels the same way. Right, buddy? Okay, update. The situation is out of control, but I am the worst vlog mentor, vlog preceptor. I'm hungry. Why is everything crooked? Why is everything chrome? So we had some nice chicken wings, and then we also had some nice dried noodles. That's also Why are gone. you showing that stuff? Because they need to know what we were eating. Why are we so unhealthy? There's like literally everything is oh yellow. Oh, those are little straight carbs. Diet on point today. Did we, did we eat some greens today? Do we have any greens today? What did we eat for lunch? Dumplings, dumplings. We had a uh, smoothie in the morning. Should we go <laughs> should we get a salad or something? Should we? And this is why I am so constipated. No, I'm just kidding. Um. <laughs> Are you though? Are you though? 
My face is already like, my, this entire day my face has been like red hot and it's really hot outside. It's probably like 85 degrees, but oh my God, on top of this skin situation and the heat, like I was just on fire. Hey guys, it is obviously a couple of days later after I filmed that clip. Literally my entire face started peeling so bad and I was like not in on camera shape for quite a little bit. So I wasn't able to close the vlog, but I thought since I didn't close the vlog, I would add a little bit of an extra section and talk to you guys a little bit about the NCLEX and how I studied for it, especially since a lot of you guys are having your test dates pushed back or some people are starting to study for the NCLEX a little bit earlier since you have that extra time. Um, so I'm gonna just answer some of the most common questions that I get in my DMs about the NCLEX. Number one, do you need to study for the NCLEX while you're in nursing school? This is a great question. Personally, my school required me to do a certain number of uh, NCLEX questions every quarter and it wasn't a lot. I think it was between like 60 to 100 every quarter. So, although it wasn't really helping me, you know, learn the material, it at least helps you to kind of start practicing for the NCLEX and the kind of questions that you're going to see later on. So um, I would highly recommend in your third and fourth year to start kind of looking at the questions, but just know that the majority of the study doesn't really need to happen until after you graduate so I wouldn't stress out too much about it another question I get asked really often is how to choose the best test prep materials and this is a really really big question I always say that you know everyone kind of has a different learning style so it's really important to figure out which resources work best for you um, I highly recommend if you go online most of these test prep companies have free trials that you can try out and you can go see what their questions are like what their rationales are like ultimately what it's going to come down to is how good the quality of the question bank is and so if you're not familiar with the Q bank it is essentially a test bank with you know anywhere from a thousand to four thousand questions and this is what you're going to do to practice for the NCLEX and the most important part about this QBank is the rationales. The way that you're going to improve your score for the NCLEX is by learning from the mistakes that you made previously and making sure that you don't make those mistakes again. I personally really, really, really love Board Vitals. They have over 3,500 questions and their rationales are so on point. They also have diagrams and things like that. Board Vitals also offers the computer adaptive exam. So that is a really, really key component. So based on how you're scoring, if you're answering hard questions correctly versus if you're answering them incorrectly it's going to adjust the level of difficulty of the next question that you get they also have an awesome phone app you know what was really important to me was that you know if I was taking a trip for a couple of days or if I was waiting in the parking lot or if I was in the bathroom I wanted to make sure that I wasn't wasting that time during that time I was prepping for boards and so just like pulling up the app on my phone and being able to do a couple of questions on the go is really really helpful and it kind of trains your mind as well. Board Vitals offers a lot of different things, whether you are studying for the NCLEX or you are studying for your shelf exams in med school or step one, two, three, your NP exams. They have all that stuff on their website. Hey guys, I'm actually editing this video right now, but I thought I would give you guys some insight from the med student himself because Board Vitals actually revamped their USMLE Step 1 QBank and they have tougher questions, better explanations, more visual aids, and now obviously you can use it on the mobile app, which is so awesome. But now to Kevin. Yes, obviously the number one resource for studying for step one are QBanks. The best way to learn is just do extra questions. So the fact that they have over 2,750 questions is great. And that the going over each question, they have why the incorrect answers are wrong and the rationales looks great. They have mnemonics to help you remember things. They mm -hmm. have hyperlinks to references. Yeah, I think it'd be worthwhile, especially given that they have like a free trial to see if this is a good resource. Certified, recommended by a nurse and a med student. So I personally really love Board Vitals. I'm actually gonna link their information down below in the description box. And I also have a coupon code for you to use so that you can save some money. Go check it out. Other things about the NCLEX, how long should I be studying for the NCLEX? This I think is really on a case by case basis. I can tell you what I did. I studied for a month straight, no days off. Okay, so I graduated on June 15th and then I took my NCLEX, I believe on July 20th. I essentially studied until the point that I got my ATT and then took the test right away. 
So I studied from about 8 a.m. every morning until about 2 p.m. So usually around six to eight hours a day, depending on the day. And I did 75 questions in the morning, remediated, and then did 75 questions in the afternoon, remediated, and then did a full day review at the end. What do I feel like were the hardest parts of the NCLEX? Definitely all the select all that apply questions. So the way that you want to approach these select all that apply questions is you look at every option choice. So say it's like choice A, B, C, D, E. You look at the question and you say, is A true? And then you decide whether it's true or not, mark it, and then you go to B. Is B true based on the question? Is C true? And you do them individually and you don't ever go back and look at it again because based on the other answer choices, it may influence what you think about, you know, what's correct and what's not correct. And most of the times you're going to second guess yourself and actually change your answer to something that's incorrect. Okay, you guys, I hope those tips were helpful. I hope you enjoyed this video and leave me a comment down below if you have future suggestions for other videos. But if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up for that YouTube algorithm and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss my weekly uploads. I think I'm actually gonna be uploading a little bit more frequently in the next coming weeks. And yeah, I love you guys so much. Don't forget that you are a 10 out of 10. Don't let anyone else make you feel otherwise. And I will see you soon. Bye. Swear it's been 700 degrees in here since you came in